Good morning, students. This lesson is for class four for the subject of general science. Topic: Adaptations in terrestrial plants, which is covered in chapter five. Adaptation in plants, starting on page number fifty-seven of your textbook, titled "New Trends in Science: Evergreen," and is being submitted to you on ninth of August. 2021 my dear students through our previous lesson we have learned the terms habitat and adaptation in case of animals and now we will be learning about adaptations in plants children plants grow almost all over the world either on land or in water you can find plants on high mountains deep oceans hot and cold places coastal areas or dry and wet places all plants like animals are also adapted to live in a certain place the natural surroundings in which a plant grows is called its habitat it is the place where plants can live grow and reproduce adaptation different regions or places have different weather and soil conditions plants also need to adapt themselves according to their habitat these adaptations are must for a plant to survive plants growing in a particular region adjust themselves in that region by developing some special features the features that help a plant to survive in that natural surroundings are called adaptations here are some examples of plants showing adaptations students many plants have thorns to protect them from animals for example rose in many plants leaves are reduced to spines so that water loss is minimum and the example is cactus it has needle like leaves there are some plants like touch me not known as mimosa pudica have sensitive leaves they close that is they fold their leaves when they are touched some plants are poisonous and cause itching sensation on our skin and the example is poison ivy adaptations based on habitat students based on their habitat plants are broadly divided into two groups and these two groups are terrestrial plants and the aquatic plants first of all we'll discuss the terrestrial plants plants that grow on land are called terrestrial plants they can be found in plains deserts marshy areas along the coastlines on hillsides and on mountains so let us now discuss first the plants of cold hilly areas the special features of these plants are they are usually straight and tall as you can see in the diagram they are cone shaped and this cone shape is very helpful for them how because snow easily slides off their branches because of their cone shape the plants growing on hilly areas like cedar and spruce these plants have slim narrow needle like leaves and they have a waxy coating that prevents the leaves from losing much water these plants produce cones with seeds instead of flowers that is why they are called coniferous trees and the examples of such trees are pine fir cedar spruce and the other now moving on to the plants in the plain areas students trees and plains 
have lots of branches with plenty of leaves and flowers. They shed their leaves in autumn or winter. And the trees that shed their leaves in autumn are called deciduous trees. Trees that remain green throughout the air are known as evergreen trees. These trees, they remain green throughout the year. Examples are rubber, teak, people and mango. Now students, before moving further in our lesson, let us first recapitulate the part covered till now. So try to write the answers to the following simple questions in your notebook. Question number one, name a plant with thorns. Question number two, how cone shape of trees help them in growing in these regions? And then question number three, what are deciduous trees? And question number four, what are evergreen trees? I hope you all must have written the answers correctly. Answer number one is rose. And answer to question number two is the cone shape helps to slide off snow from their branches. Answer number three, trees that shed their leaves in autumn are called the deciduous trees. And answer number four, trees that remain green throughout the year are called evergreen trees. Students, now let us study about the plants in the coastal areas. Plants that grow in coastal regions have to adjust to sandy soil, salty water and a wet and windy climate. Coconut trees grow in such regions. These trees have flexible trunk and cylinder leaflets which make them wind resistant. Now moving on to the plants in deserts. As desert receives very little or no rain. So plants growing here have certain features that help them to survive in the dry conditions of deserts. Desert plants do not have many leaves. So their stems carry out photosynthesis. Their stems are fleshy as they store water in them and the leaves are modified to spines. Spines means thorns and it is there to prevent the loss of water through evaporation. So students, now we will be studying about the plants in marshes or swampy areas. Areas with sticky, clay and wet soil are called marshes or swamps. As marshes have waterlogged soil, the plants growing here are not able to breathe in air. So, these plants have roots that grow above the ground. These roots are called breathing roots. These absorb water and minerals for photosynthesis. The plants that grow in marshes are called mangroves. Now students, we will study about another category of plants which are known as saprophytic plants. Some non-green plants, non-greens means they are not green in color, such as mushrooms and molds cannot prepare their own food. Why? As they do not have chlorophyll. So, they depend upon other plants and dead decaying matter for food. Such plants are called saprophytic plants. Now, we will be discussing about some unique plants. First of all, bread mold. Bread mold is the fungus which grows on bread. It can be seen when bread gets spoiled by keeping it in moist conditions. As it does not contain chlorophyll, hence is not a photosynthetic plant. Moving on to algae. 
algae are very simple plants which mostly covers the unclean surface. As it is green in color, it can perform photosynthesis. Continuing our discussion with the parasitic plants. Students, some plants cannot make their own food and live on other plants to obtain nutrition from them. And they often cause harm to the plant on which they grow and feed. Such plants are called parasitic plants. And the example of such type of plants is dodder, that is cuscuta, also named as cuscuta. Now, moving on to another category, which is the insectivorous plants. Some plants eat insects. Such plants are called insectivorous plants. Their leaves are modified to trap insects. So, students, with this, I am concluding the lesson here. So, your home assignment for this week is, after going through the lesson carefully, you need to do worksheet 1, page number 60 in your book only. Thank you, students.